I want to talk for just a minute about, this is where, for those of you who are already in a group, and you, you know, you're like, you know what, I got this, I understand you can't do life alone, this is the one I want you to listen to really carefully, because I want Jameson to explain to us kind of how the group got started, and kind of how it's changed over time, so Jameson, tell us about that. Bribing people, that was how I, <laughs> basically how I got people in my group. Um, <laughs> Honestly, it, it actually, um, this is a testament to how, what the size of group looks like. It can be big, it can be small. When we first started, Rachel and I, we were in a one-bedroom apartment, uh, two-bedroom apartment, sorry. But, I mean, our living room was maybe the size of this front stage. A um, bi little bit bigger than that, maybe. But um, it was Rachel, me, and Nancy. Um, we had another couple that was actually in the group, but they had to take a few weeks off, and it just worked out. And Dick was hunting. So it was us three for like three weeks. Um, we got to know Nancy really well, really quickly. Uh, and so um, from there, it just kind of grew. Um, Dick came back, and we got to know Dick. And the other couple came back. We got you know to integrate them and, and get going. And, and over time, it's just changed. We've lost some people, but we've added a lot more. Um, uh, Greg and Charlie came uh, to church, and we knew them through an acquaintance of ours at another church. And um, uh, first of all, I challenged Greg to a obstacle course we had here at Ridge Point, and I won, just so you know. <laughs> um, and that's, that's how we really kind of, like, crashed into getting to know them. And uh, Rachel and I were like, you know, we really need to get them in our group. That would be really good. And so we invited them to group, and um, this is the proof that we bribed them mm -hmm. because they drove all the way from Fort Meade. That's like a 30, 45-minute drive for them. Um, every Tuesday night, and, not, and they were also started helping out with youth groups. So, I mean, for them to come, it was really huge, really cool, um, and they, they put a lot of devotion to it. Um, and then, so later on down the road, um, Josh and Becca, I did that backwards, Becca and Josh, mm -hmm. um, they, <laughs> they were kind of, they came to the church and visited, and it was a question of, uh, are they going to be our new youth leaders, Josh and Becca, and um, that one night we get to meet him, I, you know, I got to mess with him and got to really get to know him qu pretty quickly. And as soon as they left, I went to Chris and JJ and I said, Dibs, uh, I said, I want them in our group. Um, so they were basically put in a group before they came. They had no choice. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, but, I mean, it just, it, it's been an organic thing. Just kind of, it, it, it feels like to me it just kind of happened. Um, yes, we did seek out some people and we did try to, you know, Strate not strategically, but just people we wanted to see in our group. But it just felt like people just kind of came in naturally. Um, the latest was Debbie, and she doesn't know this, and uh, someone pointed it out last service. Um, Rachel and I were praying, but not just us. A lot of us were praying for her to be in group. Because um, we all we knew Debbie, we loved Debbie, and we had no idea she was in group. We found out she was when we were trying to steal her away from group, apparently. <laughs> um, but she added, and honestly, she just fit in right away. It was like she was already family. And I, I want, I think Greg's going to talk a little bit about this, but I just want you to kind of understand the, the attitude uh, that they kind of approach, or at least, and I think all the group does this, um, that they approach toward uh, just people who are outside of the group or who are not a part of the group. And so, Greg, will you speak to that a little bit? So our strategy is every time we see a, a new face, um, we don't hit them up necessarily the first week, but if they continue to come, we uh, approach them about small groups um, if we're um, not up to full capacity. And right now we're not, and I'm working on one person right now. Um, he doesn't know that yet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, our goal is not to steal from other groups, but to get the new faces involved. Um, we all have an open line to communication with each other. Um, if we're seeking someone out, we'll all talk to each other about it. Um, so there's no shady stuff or sneaky stuff going behind anyone's back. Everyone's aware of it. Um, one thing that really turned me on to uh, groups was before we, we even started, my wife and I started coming to Ridgepoint, was um, <laughs> Kevin Willis, uh, the bull. <laughs> he... Um, <laughs> Um, he was building my race engines, and because I lived so far away, I could only get to Kevin at a late time of night, and he would always tell me, you can come by any time, 
just not Monday because I have connection group. And so seeing his commitment to his group kind of carried over to uh, my personal life and, you know, to this group as well. Okay. So, and I want you to, for those of you who are already in a group, I want you to notice that that mindset is that, you know, if they're constantly thinking, if we have a spot in group, who's the next person? Who's the next people that need to be a part of this? Now, we, you know... Um, We'd love to talk about groups every single week. Uh, we can't do that. We have other things that we have to talk about. So what we'd encourage you to do is constantly have that in the back of your mind is what can we do to help fill up our group? Or even greater, what can we do to, you know, maybe it's time for our group to change a little bit and make that change look a little differently where a couple of us go here and we start something new and we go get some new people or some of us and then the others, we, we go do something and we start something new and we go get people. That's, that's huge. We have to, you know, last week when, when JJ talked about the vision, the, 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 the vision of the church and this idea of United, that this is one of those ways that we can do that, is, is, is to share the vision through our groups. That sometimes it's not just a matter of who in the church needs to be connected, but who also, even outside of the church, there are people that might come who are neighbors that might come to your group, um, hang out with your group, maybe not come to the study, but they might come to hang out one time and just see what it's like, whereas they might not step inside the doors of the church. So this is an opportunity for us to share the vision. So I'd say this, in just a, in, a, in a few minutes, ultimately our goal today is to get people to sign up for groups. So if you're sitting out there and you need to be a part of one, sign up for one. But if you're already a part of one, be thinking about what it looks like for you guys to add some people.